Ballet Club. It looks like the open all or button is coming back very soon. We got the latest details in this video. Also, what is the latest on Battle World? We're gonna talk about that in this video as we answer the rest of your questions from the mailbag because it is a late version of Mailbag Thursday. And if you're ready for all that and more, then you know to do Valley Club. Find that like button and let's go. Bye, bye, bye. And welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I am Valley Flying and I hope you're having a great day. I am back from vacation. Family and I had a great time down in San Antonio. Normally, I don't post that kind of stuff on this channel, but if you want to see some more my life kind of stuff on the channel, let me know down in the comments. But we're here to discuss Marvel Strike Force, answer your questions for the mailbag, including the open all or button. There's a recent data mine, but before we get to all that stuff, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button for more Marvel Strike Force content. We are back from vacation, and in a normal week, there's at least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on the channel, usually more question and answer videos. Normally there's a news video. I'm not sure if there's gonna be one this week. Guides, everybody help your experience in Marvel Strike Force. Let's move forward to the data mines. These are from yesterday, courtesy of Brother Quick Draw. And as far as this open all or button, it was a much requested feature for a long time. We had this in the game, but and the anniversary of Marvel Strike Force, they sent out a bunch of orbs and everybody was eager to open those orbs right away and it crashed the servers. They brought the open all orb button back a few weeks or a few months later. I'm not sure the exact timing, but they brought it back temporary because it was still crashing the game and I think they wanted a more permanent solution. Hopefully this data mine indicates that a permanent solution has been found and the this is coming back very, very soon. To me, it wouldn't be in the data files if uh, they didn't have something, but of course, everything in the data files are stuff that change. So this could mean nothing. Sometimes we get data mines of things that never, that still haven't been in the game. But uh, this, this to me, I think it's coming back. But let me know what you think in, a, in the comments down below. But let's uh, check out what the data files say. Select the number of orbs to open. This is cool. Automatically open X number of orbs right here. It may take a few moments for these orbs to be open. You may stop at any time. And what this means to me is it looks like we'll be able to select a number of orbs that we can open. Uh, we have a 10X in the game right now. I was hoping for 100X just to kind of mitigate all the opening and all that stuff, the time that it takes to open all that stuff. Well, it looks like it may be something a little better. So if you're wanting to open 80, maybe you could just open 80. If you're looking to open 300, maybe you could open 300 orbs. Now this next part does get a little confusing. It appears that there is gonna be a cost for this, but there was some clarification by community manager, Laura and mobile gamer stream last night. And because she did some clarification, I would assume that this is definitely coming. Not one of these things that gets date of mind and then gets scrapped. I think this is coming. Now what this says here, automatically purchase and open X amount of orbs, cost, cost amount, cost type. It may take a few moments for these orbs to be open. You may stop at any time. Now cost would indicate it costs gold or some kind of currency. Well, we got some clarification what the cost means. I wanted to clarify the cost is a confirmation these resources used to open example, uh, for example, orb fragments. Uh, and what she says, a better example would be that if you use credits to open orb, you have to confirm that expenditure. So uh, some of the orbs, if you don't have enough of these orbs, you do spend power cores. And I think that's what it is uh, confirming in case you uh, select uh, more orbs than you have. It's going to start to go into some resources there. So uh, be careful of this amount. I think what this is indicating is that a confirmation button in case you go over the amount of orbs that you are trying to open. Not sure, but uh, you could take uh, the, the clarification that Lori gave for what it's worth. Those were the exact words that she had. Uh, uh, orbs open, X number of orbs, total orbs, and opening a batch of orbs is what it says for this last data mine. Let me know what you think all these means. Let me know when you think this is coming back. I hopefully, I hope it is coming back sooner rather than later because it's been missing for a while. All right, and first question of the week. Any chance you could explain tie scores for the monthly events? Both me and my alliance mates scored the same amount of points, 700, 910, but they got the one to 2% rewards and I got the three to 10% rewards. It's a big difference in rewards, one to 2% crimson gear and diamonds, while 3% got none of those. And if we look at this summer nights, it is a one to 2% right here. That's all the good stuff. Got some diamonds, got some crimson gear, three to 10% doesn't have any of that. 
Unfortunately, we don't have a leaderboard on this. Uh, there is, it's a leaderboard event, but there's no way to see your actual rank right now. A lot of times we have events, we see the actual events, and this is a more of a problem in a lot of these legendary events, uh, a lot of the tower mode events that we've had. And what the devs did do uh, with those is adjust these scores. And they did that for tie scores. One of the big problems with these events that I talked about in the past is uh, they're based on these percent rewards, but sometimes these percents don't match up, especially with tiebreakers, because people are scoring the exact the same amount. Now, previously, they separated these ties by first person that gets that. They've also done die total collection power. They've done a bunch of different ways to avoid the ties. And for those events, what they've done, like except, let's say that you're in rank two, you have a score of, let's say for example, 400,000 right now for rank two. Well, if you are at rank nine, then you still have that 400,000. Well, it's gonna be a weird situation. And what the devs have done with those events, like I said, if you have the um, the store that the same score that rank two has, well, they, what they've done is extend these out and uh, extend these numbers so that uh, it's instead of one to three, it would be one to nine or whoever has that exact same score, then the next rank will get these rewards. I guess it, in this case, it'll just be number 10. Then rank 11 through 50, it would have that rank. But let's say someone at uh, 50 has the exact same scores as someone all the way to 60. Well, it'd be extended from 50 to 60. So those 10 more people would be added haven't done that with this though and i guess there hasn't been enough complaining about this so i am gonna definitely complain about this because they seem to have fixed some events but not all events and this, this is a problem because like you said big difference between these two percent rewards and these three percent rewards so someone in this middle section here getting screwed out of these rewards hey violet fine i don't know if you read it right but he said non-horseman and red hulk is a horseman so i don't know if he wants a re-answer just telling you so this is the question in question firstly hope you and your family doing well secondly i have a question about dark dimension six and this is where i screwed up with this question uh normally with the dark dimension recommendations i say just do whatever you what the most current recommendations for the top level dark dimension is and do those for the lower ones however there's some different requirements for dark dimension six there are there is a non horseman legendary section black cat is great doc octa is great Old Man Logan is great. Green Island Classic is great. And for your fifth, Omega Red or Nick Fury. All right, so for the non-horseman legendary, I actually went into the Dark Dimension 6 planner because that's what screwed me up last time. You have Doc Ock, you have Old Man Logan, you have Black Cat and you have Green Goblin Classic. I think you have some of the best characters in the game. Do not do Nick Fury. He's not gonna give you a lot of value. Nova has a little bit of value and I'm thinking of actually taking him into Dark Dimension 7. But I do use him in War. Get some use in Cosmic Crucible. Omega Red, I use them sometimes in War. I get some use out of them in Cosmic Crucible. So I think the choice should be between Omega Red and Nova, not between Omega Red and Nick Fury. Both good characters. Nova still is involved in the meta because of War. Nick Fury is kind of out of the meta. Even with his early speed up that he gives to characters, I think he's out of the meta. So I think the choice should be Nova and Omega Red. Personally, I would go Nova, but if you have more mutant gear or have the unique pieces for Omega Red, just do whichever one is first. Hey, Valley, I'm a long time subscriber and a first time mailbag questioner. Anyway, I have my spider society built up. Should I start building my alpha flight or my bifrost? I'm afraid that if I spend resources on them, I won't have the long-term benefit like alpha flight would. And I think alpha flight is gonna have a longer term benefit. Val is great for Dark Dimension, but like I said, for Dark Dimension 7, I'm not bringing her in. So I think Bifrost is losing value. Now, a lot of the decision is gonna be based on what you and your alliance mates have. So for example, if we go into the game and look at an incursion, there's this section here that has three lanes. You have another section with three lanes, which means that you can have someone float on this side and someone float on this side. One person does not need to have Bifrost built up. So if the rest of your alliance has Bifrost, they can do these lanes. You can kind of skip the Bifrost. The same thing goes for the spotlight raids as well. With this one, we have four different lanes, two people in each lane. And if your lane mate has Alpha Flight built up, well, maybe you could tackle the unlimited rate nodes and the Spider Society nodes, and they could handle the Alpha Flight. Really depends on you and your lines. But if it were me, obviously the more long-term value is gonna be from the Alpha Flight team. They're a newer team, they have better stats, they have a better kit, and they actually have some value on war defense right now. They're very tough to beat on war defense. By Frost, very easy to beat on war defense, doesn't really have a role in Cosmic Crucible. 
and is most likely going to be replaced when we get a new raid but we will have to see i don't think anything's be confirmed yet uh they may be doing something totally different or they may be following the same pattern that they have for these incursion raids and doom raids and everything like that so uh, I think you need to talk to your alliance, see what they need you to do more. I don't think the answer is going to be the same for everybody, but if it were me, based on what I can do with my alliance mates and everything like that, I would be building Alpha Flight, but it may not be the same for you. I always see team recommendations. I'm sure this has been asked. But what about actual optimal tomb placement within the team? And I'm not sure if you're talking about Spider Society, Bifrost, or Alpha Flight. So we'll talk about all of them in this video. Uh, we'll go Alpha Flight first. So once Sasquatch, she's a taunter. I place him next to Wolverine because Wolverine uh, has a chance to come back to life. Uh, and then the lower tunes are here. Uh, uh, Guardian, Northstar, and then Sunfire all the way to end. I have Sunfire's Raider. I have both uh, Northstar and uh, Guardian as skirmishers right now. That's just because they have low focus. I think Raider is probably a little more optimal for both of those characters. Uh, Wolverine's a striker, and we have a skirmisher for Sasquatch. As far as Spider Society, this may not be the optimal ice wake because that changes so often. Uh, but as far as the placement, we want Penny here all the way to the end. Noir next to Penny. He does go into stealth and he has a revive once. We have Gwen in the middle. She has dodge and hopefully these two can break some counter attack, some chain attacks that might be happening. The order for Peter B and Pav doesn't really matter too much. I think most people have Peter B at the end and Pav right uh, in the middle between Peter B and Ghost Spider. Uh, this team doesn't really have a lot of adjacent attacks or adjacent callouts in their passive. They don't really have a taunter, so the placement is not as important as Spider's side. I think these three you want to place with like this, though. And then Pav and Peter B, you want them like this. As far as Bifrost... They're all with their team. I don't know if placing matters too much, but this is how I have them placed. Uh, they usually sim the raids pretty well. Once in a while, they do fail it, and then I'm like, oh, I should have uh, manually played that. But Beta Ray Bill, he does taunt. He's at the end. Val next to Beta Ray Bill because that is the character that I have built up the most. Uh, we also have the rest of these characters at the end, and that's how I have them placed. I'm not sure if the Bifrost is the best placement here, but this is where we have them placed. Hello again from Scotland. Been a couple years since I've piped up with a question, but here it goes. So while all these new teams coming out, I've had a little bit of a spoilt for choice wall and need some guidance i'm struggling to find up-to-date information my goal is to get the final two horsemen complete i've sailed through famine and death using extreme x with high difficulty four node method i'm struggling to pick a city bio team to cover my last horseman like x-men did i'm contemplating the hive mind but is there better all right so looking at this there's no real full team that we have here we have a few different teams we have spider society which is a great team great for the raids great for the incursion raids and the uh spotlight raids as well we have hive mind four of the hive mind characters here but we're missing the most valuable character in void knight we have one of the superior slash sinister six and i would base your five characters around these choices not necessarily for how they perform in the trials because once you're done with that it's over i would base it on what you're going to do after the trial so the raids cosmic crucible war and that's what i would base my choices on and if it were me I would go spider side. I would build up the three spider societies because they have value in both the incursion and spotlight raids. I would probably go lizard because I do enjoy cosmic crucible and I use lizard in cosmic crucible and war. And the final member for me would be red goblin. I think after void Knight, he's the most valuable member of the team because he can bring some characters back to life. Gwenom has some value. She has a stun on her kit, two stuns if you're uh, using her in a raise. And Carnage passive was really what makes all symbiotes tick when they drop these enemies below. So you got some great choices here. But like I said, if it were me, go Spider-Man Pop, Peter B, Ghost Spider, Lizard. And I would go Red Goblin, and that is who I would use. Now, if you don't want to go Lizard, you could do either Gwenom or Carnage. There's some value there. Probably wouldn't go Venom unless you're going full Spider Society, or full Hive Mind, and then rounding it out with maybe Peter B or Lizard or something. But you got some options here. Really depends on what game mode you uh, want to do after you finish these trials. Good morning. I'm looking for a good source that tracks which when teams have been released in the game. Can't find anything online. Check Reddit, msf.gg, and some Envoy channels in Discord. Short of going back to the blog post on msf.gg, 
I can't find the information I'm seeking. Do you know where I can find this information? Unfortunately, I don't have a real good answer for this question. I've seen spreadsheets that individuals have made, you know, over over the years, over the months that track all this stuff, but I'm not sure where it went. Unfortunately, I didn't save it. If any of you Valley Club knows you where you could find some information on when teams have been released, if anybody's been tracking that, let me know in the comments because I am not sure where to track all that stuff. Valley fine with Odin being the Dark Dimension 8 character, does that mean he's gonna be a mythic character instead of legendary? I would assume that the announcement of Odin being the Dark Dimension 8 character, not Professor X, means that he will be a mythic character instead of legendary. Usually legendaries have a different unlock, so all of us assume from the picture with Professor X that Odin would be included in that legendary system. Well, they made the announcement that it's not. And to get this character, you need Purple ISO 8 level 3. You do need the Annihilators for whatever the next legendary is. It's not going to be Odin. You also would need Illuminati for that. But for Odin, uh, Purple ISO 8 3 is uh, what you need for this character. These are some of the traits. So using your Purple ISO 8, Apocalypse, Doom, Ultron, Mephisto, Super Scroll, Dormammu, Ultimus, Kestrel, they're all characters that are going to be needed for that Odin unlock. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he's gonna have a mythic tag. Also, with Odin being the next Dark Dimension character instead of Professor X, do you think they will change Professor X release method? Or do you expect to be Professor X to be Dark Dimension uh, Gear 20 requirement? Uh, they haven't said either way. They may totally change what they're doing for Dark Dimension. I'd assume at this point that it's still the same though. Gear Tier 19 for Mephisto, Gear Tier 20 for Professor X. We'll see if that comes to fruition though, but I, I think since they haven't said anything, either public or privately, that they still have the same requirements for Fresh X, but we'll see when it comes out, my brother. Hey, Valley Vine, I just wanted to ask, when do you think we'll get an update on Battle World? I think it's gonna be very, very soon. The devs did have a approximate timeline for when they want Battle World released. They did tell that to the envoys. It's still under NDA. Uh, and obviously their plans could change. Could be moved up, could be moved back to, uh, based on uh, what they are and far as their dev time. But just based on that, I would expect that we're gonna get a update very, very soon. It's been teased since last year. I've been wanting this game mode seemed uh, like a fun game mode but uh yeah we still don't have a lot of information yet uh publicly so i, I think it's going to be very very soon i think we need it very very soon the only reason i would think that they would hold off on announcing it soon is because there's some other things coming before then they don't want people to get overwhelmed but i i'm looking forward to the official announcement on battle world my brother but i, I think it's going to be soon and thanks to each and every one of you that left a mailbag question in this week's video i know it's a little later than usual we're turning to the normal schedule next week so if you have a question you want it answered you know where to find it leave a question on the mailbag channel in the valley of flying discord server the link is going to be down below if you got some value from this video leave it a like it is free for you it tremendously helped out the channel and if you want to check out what are the best teams in marvel strike force right now check out the video up there and i'll see you guys next time have a great rest of your day hulk fist bump valley of flying out